It's Monday afternoon. Hey guys, I trust everybody's having a blessed day and uh, there's so much going on in our world. Um, let's just be lifting up prayers for uh, the people in Louisiana and in California, places are burning, just all over the world. I mean, it's the signs of our, our, our times. Um, I'm going to do something that I, I have not done before and so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm on uh, uh, new ground here different ground here. I want to share a dream with you that uh, I had uh, January 3rd, 2008. I don't normally uh, write dreams down, and this is probably one of two that I can remember that I've written down. I don't even know where the other one uh, is in another notebook somewhere, but this one uh, has been hanging around with me. Again, it was eight years ago. Um, and I'm beginning, I think, to understand it, uh, but I want to, I just want to share it with you, uh, and I, please, I don't want to compare a dream that I have or anybody have with, with, with scripture and, and, and what we have been looking at. I mean, our, our, our faith is in the word of God and what it has said, not in, in, in a dream that somebody has had, not discounting them. I believe that in these last days, God is doing exactly what he said he would do. I'm not even saying that this is one of them, but I can appreciate those people who have been coming on and sharing um, uh, the dreams that they believe that God has been uh, sharing with them to to encourage the rest of us out here who uh, who are looking and waiting uh, on who are going out to meet Him, going out to meet the bridegroom. But I just feel uh, you know led to share this with you as I think I'm beginning to uh, under, un understand uh, understand it in these last several days. But anyway, here 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 it is. I'm in prison, <clears throat> uh, but in this prison, it's, it's more like house arrest. In fact, the setting is a big house with lots of rooms. That's what it seems to be. It's a co-ed prison setting. Men and women even use the same restrooms, just like in someone's home. Uh, I never felt threatened, but there was the sense of knowing I did not have the freedom to leave if I desired to. I heard someone in the house speak to the other prisoners, like loud, over a loud speak. Didn't see this person, just heard them speak to the other prisoners. Uh, people confined to this house. And I remember thinking how encouraging his words were. But I also thought it strange that he could or would only speak for what seemed like a very short time. And somebody learned of my desire to share with the others in this same way. So when I was given the opportunity, I remember the feeling of knowing that I had only a very little time to say what I had to say. And maybe that's because I just, I, I surmise that, okay, if, if, if the guy, is that all he had, does it just for a little time, it's like a tweet or a, you know, a little post and this was before Twitter and before people were all really into Facebook, 2008. But uh, now that I'm using, beginning to use and being encouraged to use, you know, these tools to encourage uh, people with these, uh, in these last uh, waning moments of the end of this age, uh, I'm finding great values. I see others doing it and I'm copying and, 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 and you know, Daniel Valius is, you know, he does a whole lot of work and a lot of other people, watchmen out there just putting up little videos and little tweets. And so, uh, you know, I can either share what they're sharing or, or do. But Tammy W. suggested that uh, I, I, I do a video or do another video. And so thank you, Tammy, for encouraging me in that way. And so let me get back to the dream. Let me get back to the dream. Uh, <clears throat> So I remember thinking how encouraging his words were, but I, I thought it strange that he could or would only speak for what seemed like a very short time. Somebody learned of my desire to share with the others in this same way. So when I was given the opportunity, I remember the feeling of knowing that I'd had only a very little time to say what I had to say. It seemed like no sooner than I started people, than I started, people began to leave and go back to their rooms. They were talking about how good the words. See, I could I could overhear what they were saying uh, in the dream. They were talking about how good the words were, and seemed to think I had I had helped them. Uh, but it was time to go, and uh, it was just time to go. That 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 was all. 
And I remember thinking, but I'm not finished. I, I, I have more to share. The people kept leaving. And I thought to myself, in this dream now, I'm, I'm frustrated. Because I'm, I'm going, you know, it's, they don't have anything else to do. They're just going to go back to their room. They, they say that the, the words that I'm giving them, that I'm sharing with them, is helping them. And they like it, but they just just time to go. And I was frustrated with that. But they don't really have anywhere that important that they're going. They're just going to their rooms. It was time to go. That's all. I only remember recognizing one other person in this dream. Well, two people. But the first person uh, I remember was with Keith, Keith Gooseby. And uh, I knew, I didn't really see him, I don't think, in the dream. But I knew for some reason that there was a set of clothes, a his uniform, his military uniform, he's in the Navy. He was in the Navy, I think, at that time, getting ready to get out. Or just recently retired, I'm not, not sure. Uh, but anyway, his military uniform was laid out on a bed with someone else's set of clothes. I don't know why I felt that was somebody else's set of clothes. That, that the military uniform I felt strongly was Keith. But that civilian set of clothes... You know, as I, I'm looking at what I wrote here in the dream, I, with someone else's set of clothes. But it was a military set of I mean, it was a civilian suit of clothes. Nice suit laid out. It seemed to me that he was preparing to go somewhere. As I was leaving the room, I disturbed the suit of clothes, not the uniform. Something I was wearing seemed to catch and pull the suit. And I thought, I have to make this neat again before whoever was going to wear them came. The setting then in the dream shifts. Still confined, but this setting is more prison-like. It's like dormitory-style beds, and people seem more like real criminals. Uh, and uh, then I looked up, and I saw someone coming towards me, and I, was, I felt threatened by a man from my past. I, I recognized who it was. Uh, this is a real individual from my past who went to prison and was confronting me about something I said that helped to land him there. I was really afraid as he approached and felt that I would have to defend myself. But it proved, uh, but it appeared that he had no intent other than just letting me know he was there. And I had some role in that. So now we're still in this setting in the dream, but I noticed that there are children also there. And now it's time to eat, mealtime. Lots of food, but mostly pastries, fruit, etc., like a continental breakfast, you know. And no eggs and bacon and stuff, no, just uh, nice, looks like nice uh, fruit, uh, and, but just pastries and fruit and stuff, like a continental breakfast. And then I have here, someone came. Da, da, da. A voice was heard over a PA system. So this someone that came, I didn't see anybody. I didn't know who it was. I, a voice came over the PA system. And this voice, he made a humorous remark. said, you know, something funny. There was a man sitting across from me who was obviously very disturbed by the remarks. Okay. They were humorous and a joke. And meant to lighten, I think, the place up and the people up, but didn't do that for him. He was disturbed, seemed to be disturbed by the remarks. He seemed hopeless and said something to the effect that he was never going to get out of that place. And I remember thinking, I underline thinking here, because I didn't say anything to him, but if he could have heard what I was thinking, he would have heard me say, but even in this place, you can live a life of purpose. You can either do that or die a bitter, angry prisoner. Uh, my cell phone is ringing, and it was really my, my cell phone that was ringing. It's justice or someone in Zimbabwe. That was it. That was January 3rd, 2008, eight years ago. And uh, just thinking a little bit about, uh, you know, about the dream and, you know, about sharing and especially the message 
uh, of, of the imminent return of Jesus Christ and the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. And, you know, a lot of people seem to be excited about what I'm sharing. But quite honestly, I don't see a whole lot of people changing the way they live. And, uh, and a lot of people seem to be encouraged about the videos that we're, that uh, the watchman for this great day. I mean, he just, that last, one of the last videos he did was just incredibly awesome. I just, it must have been a God thing that God gave him that kind of revelation on the house and the chambers in Psalms 19. It was just, it's just great. If you, if you haven't looked at that uh, video, you should do so. Watchman for that great day. Uh, yeah, probably the, one of the last one or two videos that he's he's done. I may put it in the link here so you can you can see it. But anyway, hey, that was you know that 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 was the dream. Um, so now there it is. I've shared it. Uh, have a real blessed day, and uh, let us continue to keep one another lifted up in prayers uh, and to, and to be encouraged and uh, just just go out to meet him because he's coming. God bless.